<clears throat> oh, <clears throat> you've got you've got media questions. I've got answers. Let's watch the video. Sponsor time. Welcome back everyone to the Umbraco back office and today is a continuation of the kind of the uh, learning how the back office works uh, from a graphic user interface uh, portion. There are other videos available, uh, especially the content one and this one naturally follows the content one so make sure you check that one out if you haven't already. And so let's get to it. So the content section which uh, is over here on the left hand side named or I'm sorry this is the media section <laughs> this is over here on the left hand side and this is where you know your media is going to be so in general you're going to have images uh, files like PDFs maybe Excel something like that and so uh, what you will see right here if you click right here this is the root and the root has some things that you can do and you can create a new file create a new folder create mm -hmm. an image in general, um, I don't use the file or the image here because we'll use drag and drop to actually create our stuff. And let's create a folder here um, just to give you an idea of what it can do. 80s rocks, that'll be the name of our folder. And as you can see, it adds it over here. Um, we can take an image and we can click on it and we get the detail here. And uh, you get some meta information here, the image itself, uh, the width, the height. If we click on the properties tab here, you can see a link right to it. If we click on that, you will see here that we go right to that media item. Uh, an ID, just like content, created time, who was created by, and the type. So this is uh, a media type, very, very similar to a document type. Uh, in fact, you can even put custom properties here if you wanted to put alt text. That's very uh, common to do. You also have your extension and the size in bytes there. And I've gone ahead and cheated on you again. So um, what I've done here is I've already uploaded two images and I've created what we call these thumbnails right here, which is possible when you use the image cropper as your uh, data type here on the upload image. And this little guy right here, it looks like David Hasselhoff's third eye but it's not. In fact, I affectionately call this the hockey puck. And if, as you notice, as I move this around, it alters uh, things over there. And so just to make things a little clearer, let's zoom in just a little bit here. And as I move around the hockey puck, you will see that not much happened on the square, but this little 200 by 50 pixel uh, crop here does. So if we were really thinking, you know, what's the focus of this uh, particular image and we think it's his eyes, we put it near his eyes and there you go. And notice if I go kind of to the side or whatnot, there's not much change there because this in general is a square image. So if I unzoom here and let's go hang out with Tom Selleck here and you notice that the hockey puck is focusing on this awesome manly uh, chest here. And if we zoom in here as well, you'll notice here that the banner thinks that that's the most interesting part of the image, so therefore it crops it accordingly. And of course that's not true. I, I would imagine we would want this up by his face. Um, notice that it did change the square one because this is an, uh, the source is a rectangle image and now it moves the banner up here. So how does this help you? It means when you're rendering templates, which is outside the scope of today, um, you can tell uh, Umbraco that, hey, you know, the most important thing to focus on would be his face here. And that way, when you have to make cropping decisions, you, you choose a section where the hockey puck lives as opposed to right here. So let's uh, go ahead and unzoom here. And oops, uh, let's hit reset here. Okay, so we're zoomed out. So that's the hockey puck, and it's very useful when you have crops. And you can actually use this hockey puck even when you don't have crops. You can uh, use this to influence your output. So that's very uh, cool there. Um, obviously, one of the, the uh, best features is that we can upload media here with a drag and drop. So if we click here, you can notice here we have the click here to choose files, but this is actually a landing zone here. 
And I've got a variety of images here. We're gonna go ahead and just upload here. And as you can see, it does so in parallel here. And we got some awesome 80s images here and some, some modern images and some images of some cool people and whatnot. So um, just that quick and easy, we can upload to uh, Umbraco. So one thing that would be interesting here is if we were to go into one of these images here, now you can see the crop over here on your right, and I won't zoom in this time, but we might find that the most interesting part of the image is up this way, and you can kind of tailor your crop. And notice that we can kind of move to the side here. So we get some adjustments here, and it will adjust the crop in both uh, images here. And don't forget to save. Um, notice that when we uploaded them, we, we uploaded them all to the root. So you can actually tell Embraco to, to disallow uploading things right to the root, because usually we want things to go into a folder. So if we click on this folder that we created earlier, there's a few things you should know. Notice that I cannot drag and drop media into a folder, and that would be so awesome, and it's one of those uh, highly requested features, but you can't do that in Umbraco. So to move something uh, to the folder, what you're gonna have to do is either go into the image or the, or the file, click on move, and then select the folder. So that's one way. Way number two is right click, and you've got this context menu here, and we can move into the folder there. So if we right click uh, this image right here, amazing image, <laughs> uh, we can create and uh, we can do the create, the move, the delete, and the sort option here, just like we can with content. And if we do the sort here, obviously there's no child items there, so let's cancel out of there and let's go back up here. And now if we wanted to influence how things were sorted here, we could certainly do so. All right, so one last thing I want to show you, and this will be, like I said, a, a, a quick and fun and easy way here to uh, learn media. Let's look at the different views. So we got this button here. We can actually change it to a list view here, and we can do a bulk operation. So we can do a bulk delete. If we um, pop out here, um, we can also do the same thing with the views here. And there you go. So you can do a bulk delete. Right now, I'm unaware of any sort of way to do a bulk move. That would be awesome if you could. Um, if we uh, let's take that back. Um, if we want to search, uh, there is a context aware search. So if we want to find uh, that Trump image, we could do so. And if we don't want to see it in the list view, we could uh, find this awesome Trump photo here and not much to say about that. And uh, a few other things uh, to mention here, or at least one big thing to mention here is media is always public. So unlike the media or the content section where you can lock it down with a password and, and uh, authentication and authorization, there is currently no built-in way to do media uh, like that. However, uh, there is a third-party package by uh, Pseudomin Software, and that is called Media Protect, and we'll have a link somewhere in here um, in the description. And uh, that allows users to be able to um, protect media more like uh, you would expect from a, a CMS um, content. So there you go. And uh, as we click through the images here, we can uh, make sure that hockey puck is good. Again, make sure you hit save here. And uh, that's media. It's quick and easy. And we'll talk more about other sections soon. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>